In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple setup for doing product photography shots at home using materials that probably everyone has around. In this case, um, a table, some materials for making backdrops from, and two light sources. These are just standard desk lamps with warm white light bulbs in. You're also going to need a camera. So in my case, I've got the, the phone that I'm shooting this video on and a product, in my case, I'm just going to use this drill. So you could put your product just on the table like this and shoot it on the table um, against the background, but it's probably not going to look very good, um, especially if you've got a kind of grubby table and a grubby wall. There are ways you can get around that. If you've got a nice piece of wood or something you can put your product on, that can help. And if you can lean something up against the wall, you can also essentially fake a nice surface and a nice backdrop. But the easier way to do it is to make an infinity wall. All you need for that is a piece of flexible material, ideally white, that you can bend into a smooth curve to place behind your product. And that gives you effectively what looks like a background that just recedes into infinity. That means when you're using your product shot on a web page or in print, you can have it kind of floating in space or if you need to cut it out to use it in a graphic design, it's much easier to do that when the background recedes off into the distance without cluttering the shot. The best material I think for this is polypropylene. So you can buy this stuff from uh, craft shops uh, in much bigger sheets than this for sort of four or five pounds. And this is what I would normally use. But as you can see, I've kind of cut this down over, the t over time and uh, used it for projects. So this is not big enough for the product I'm trying to shoot. So I'm gonna to have to find something else. There's a couple of options you might have uh, lying around or you might be able to access easily. This is probably the best one. Uh, this is lining paper. Uh, so it's sold in DIY stores. It's very cheap and of course comes on a very long roll. It has got a kind of creamy color to it, which might not be ideal. It's gonna cause you some problems when it comes to doing the color correction, but it's a really nice smooth finish. And if it gets, crumpled up or dirty, you can just uh, tear it off and start a new piece. You can also get a bit more creative. Uh, this is some brown paper. You can use like craft paper, any kind of uh, colored or textured paper, even some fabrics will work quite well. But generally you want a white background. It's the most versatile background to use. I'm gonna use this sheet of white paper. Uh, it's not great, it's kind of grubby and it's got creases in it, but um, it's good enough and I think we can get rid of those um, problems, the sort of mess on the paper in post-production. So I'm gonna make this infinity wall now. Okay, that was easy. Uh, you just lay it on the table, lean it up against the wall and secure it down with uh, one or two pieces of masking tape. And when we put the product on, this gives us a nice seamless backdrop. Okay, so for lighting, I'm gonna use these two desk lamps I've got here. There are far better options for lighting than this, but I think it's perhaps the easiest place to start and you don't have to buy anything special. So let's switch these on and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've got two lights switched on pointing at the product from different angles. And it, I don't know, it might look okay on the video, but I think the photographs that you get out of this wouldn't be very good. So we need to fix some of these issues. Now the first issue is that this room is being lit, mostly not by these lights, but by daylight that's coming from the window that's over there. Uh, and daylight is a great light source uh, normally, but when it's mixed with this, these light sources that are very different color, it really messes things up. So I'm gonna have to close the curtains and block out all the light that's coming through that window. Okay, so I've closed the curtains. So now almost all the light in this room is just coming from these two desk lamps. So it's made everything a lot darker, which is normally not what you'd want for photography. But the key thing is that it means that the color of the light is uniform, at least within this area. So now we can start shaping the light in this scene to give us better control over the way the light falls on the product and also better control of the way the shadows appear on the backdrop. Okay, so I've made a few changes here. I've actually pulled this table forward and pushed the, the backdrop and the product further away so that I can get a bit of distance between this camera here that I'm going to use for the product shots 
and the product. So I want to get a bit of distance here. And the reason for that is that phones typically have quite wide angle lenses, uh, which is great for getting loads in the frame, but if things are too close, they can be really distorted. And certainly something like this with the drill, this it would make this part kind of um, distorted out in the, in the frame, which would look kind of strange. I'm using Adobe Lightroom to take these photos. At the moment, I've got everything set on just straightforward automatic settings. So I'm not doing anything uh, special with the camera. Now, straight away, there are some pretty obvious problems with this photograph. There are, uh, you can see the gaps on the, each side of the, the backdrop. But if we're gonna make this a pure white backdrop afterwards in, in post-production, we can easily Photoshop those things out. Uh, the reason I did that, I could have zoomed in on the camera, but I wanted just to give us a bit of breathing space here. The lighting on the product itself is okay. It's not great. We're losing quite a lot of detail in the, in the shadows and also some of the highlights on the kind of barrel of the drill are a bit harsh. But worse than the product is the lighting on the, on the backdrop and those shadows are really distracting. <clears throat> There's three problems I can see. Firstly, the color is different. So these two light bulbs are actually a slightly different color and you can really see that on this white backdrop. There's a kind of a yellowy tinge on one side and perhaps a slightly pinkier tinge on the other side. That's not great, uh, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. Ideally, I would have two identical bulbs. The second problem is that on the right side of the photo, we can see the light falling off in the top corner. That's because the, the, the lamp isn't pointing in quite the right direction. But the third problem, and perhaps the biggest one, is that there are very distracting shadows caused by the product itself. So there's a shadow pointing off to the left and one also pointing off to the right. And in these kind of simple two light setups, that's the most common problem that I see. So what we need to do to fix this is to diffuse the light. Now, if we had some nice professional camera gear, umbrellas and soft boxes and so on, we could do that quite easily. It's a little bit more tricky with these very small light sources. The easiest way I think to do it is to reflect the light off another surface. Now you can use a wall if you're going to do this, if you, if you put your table in the corner against a white wall. You can bounce a light off the ceiling if uh, your light is strong enough, but these certainly aren't strong enough to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is use these bits of foam board as reflectors. There's a couple of standard ways to do this. One of them is to do a setup a little bit like this, where we bounce one light off a reflector on the other side back onto the product and that helps kill some of the shadows over here. But the problem with this approach is that uh, the, the light is quite a long way from the reflector, so the amount of light that we get bounced back isn't so good. So let's try a different approach. So here we've angled the lights away from the product and then reflecting them straight off these bits of white foam board uh, that are pointing back onto the product. And we can see this gives a much more diffuse light source. The drawback of all this really nice soft diffusion is that there's a lot less light falling on the product and the scene. So that means everything's just a bit darker. The way we're going to compensate for this reduced light in this setup is in the camera app itself. I'm using Adobe Lightroom and the reason for that is that it gives me full manual control over all aspects of the camera. If you're using an Android phone or an iPhone, for example, you can usually adjust the exposure in the camera app, but you can't control the way the camera makes that adjustment. And it might try and do all sorts of things which are gonna result in actually worse photos for you. So if you can, I'd advise using a manual camera app where you control everything. But for the sake of experiment, let's just try adjusting the exposure here and keeping it on automatic settings and see if we can just brighten this up. Okay, so now I've got a setting of, uh, an exposure setting of 1.7. But I wanted to try a different approach, so I'm gonna to switch to the manual settings for this camera. In Lightroom, this app, they call that professional, and this gives me access to a whole load of more controls. There are some things that I want to do to control the way the camera adjusts for the light in the scene. The first of those is to switch the ISO setting to be a fixed low ISO. The most common way for a camera phone to adjust the brightness in the scene is to bump up the ISO. That's like a volume control for 
exposure in a camera. It kind of works, but it can introduce a lot of noise into the picture, and often that noise is then smoothed out by algorithms in the software, which results in a really kind of muddy photo. So I'm going to set this to the lowest possible setting. In this case, it's ISO 25. Now on a camera phone, the only other control you have over the amount of light let in is the exposure time. Normally when you're holding the camera with your hands, you want that to be as fast as possible. But because we've got a tripod here, you can actually bump that up to be quite a long exposure. Okay, so I've made two changes here. I've changed the exposure time to be one fifth of a second, which is a quite a long exposure. And if I was holding the camera in my hands, it would be very blurry just because of the camera shake. Uh, but because it's on a tripod, that is reduced. And the other important thing for the same reason is that I've actually set a delay timer so that there's a two second delay between me pressing the shutter button and the photo being taken. So any wobble that's caused by me touching the phone is removed. Okay, so I don't know if that photo that I took with the manual controls is going to be any better than the one I took with the automatic controls, but we can compare the two side by side in post-production and see what the difference is. Within a setup like this, with two lights and a couple of reflectors, there's quite a lot of variation you can do. I'm reasonably happy with the softness of this light, but perhaps the direction could be improved. So I might want to have a reflector on top of the scene because I can see that the top of the product is still quite in shadow. And I can also see over here on the left, there's quite a deep shadow, perhaps stronger than the one on the right. So maybe that's something I'd like to adjust by moving these lights and reflectors around. Okay, so I'll do another video about the post-production process and look and see how these photos are actually turned out. And I'll also do another video to show how you could light this scene with some slightly more professional equipment if you're willing to spend a little bit of money but I think you can get pretty good results with this kind of bare minimum setup.